Okay, before we start work, we need to remind ourselves how we work in a group, don't we? So let's get Ted out and just remind ourselves what we have to do in a group. So the first rule Ted's got on here is, when I speak, I make sure that people are ready to listen. Because it's no good talking if they're not listening, Thomas, is it? No, they won't hear what you're saying. And the second rule that Ted tells us is, when I listen, I wait until the other person has finished before I speak. Because what happens if we all shout out together before that person's finished speaking? Gemma, what do you think? What would happen? It would turn into a big noise. It would turn into a big noise. So can we remember, while we're speaking in this group, that you make sure that the people are ready to listen to you and that you wait until they finish speaking and then you can add your contribution and talk as well. Now, you have worked really well as a group and you've remembered all the rules that Ted gave us to work as a group. Let's just have a look at him again. While you were working, you remembered these rules. Should we just remind ourselves what they are for next time? When I speak, I make sure that people are... What we're going to do now, we're going to compose our own poem, aren't we, for some of the younger children in reception class. And we're going to make a poem based on a very favourite poem for younger children. What's the name of the poem for younger children that we're going to use as a model? What's it called, Jessica? One, two, buckle One, two, buckle my shoe. But we're going to make our own version of it, aren't we? You're going to start at the beginning with your one, two, and you're going to work through it, brainstorming your words on the whiteboard, thinking of a good rhyme, and then when you've decided on it together, because you've got to decide together to so talk about it, then the person who's doing the writing is going to do the writing onto the sheet. Right, children, I'm going to leave you now to get on independently. I'll go and see how the other groups are getting on, OK? Well done. How about we put one, two, yes, cows go moo? Yeah. That's a great one. Shall we do that? Because they don't do all good. Yeah. Good. That one that lands in the pool. Yes, they do. No. Yeah. And the pigs at the door. Yeah. Shall we do that? Shall we put pigs eat more? Or pigs at the door? Pigs eat more. Pigs eat more. Pigs eat more. Hi, Green Root. How have you got on? Let's have a look. Did you finish? Yeah. Right, now we've been trying to write new lines for poems. Do you think you've been successful? Have you managed to do it? Yeah. Because one of our objectives this week is to work sensibly with a partner and sometimes that's quite difficult. When, you've cho when I choose partners for you, it's not always easy, it's not necessarily your best friend, is it? Were there any bits of the poem you find it difficult to agree upon? Is there any line that you didn't agree, where you both had different ideas? Um, I guess it, um, the co the cockle eats twigs, and then I said the cockle does tricks. Right, and how did you agree? Looks as if you won the argument, did you? How did you agree, Akash? Because it sounded more better. Well, that's very good, and it's difficult sometimes to agree on that, isn't it? Excellent. You're going to work as a team to do this. You're going to work as a group. Now, you need to think very, very carefully about how you work as a group. Okay. Remember to listen to each other. Remember to listen to each other carefully. Remember to share ideas with each other. If somebody comes up with an idea and you don't like the idea they've come up with, what could you do? Say why we don't like it, but nice in a nice way. Excellent. Oh, and what's that called? A critical friend. Excellent. That's called a critical friend. If you remember that, that's when we tell people, oh, well, yeah, I, your idea's got some good bits, but for this reason, it's not, as, it's not the right one for what we're doing now. OK, can you remember that? So I want you, together as a, as a group, to write a postcard. A postcard from Willie to Tom. And in that postcard, I want you to 
try and get across to Tom that you want to go back to be with him. You don't want to frighten Tom, but you want to try and get across to him that you want to come back, that you'd rather be with him. You feel safer in Little Weir World with Tom. So you're going to work together, you're going to discuss it together, and Matthew is going to describe for you. I want you to think carefully about the language that you use. I want you to think carefully about the words that you use, about the phrases, about the sentences that you use. And I want you to discuss the words to make sure you've used the best word for that situation. All right? Yeah. Off you go. I thought we could start off like with something that's like, um, I'm writing to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. That, okay. that he got back safely. Should we put that? From yeah. Yeah. Little Wheel World. Or I'm well and I got back safely. Yeah. Or you can put some feelings in it as well. Such as yeah. um like um how he's feeling like if he's you could say that he's he was sick on the train but he's a bit be feeling a bit better now. We could now we've said that he's feeling well. Mm -hmm. We can say I was sick on the train but I'm feeling a lot better now. Yeah. yeah. So put a comment say I was sick but I'm feeling much better. I was sick on the train but but I feel much better. You could say I'm missing everyone back in Little Wheel World. I think maybe you could say that but not in those exact words because yeah. Ms. Colin said like you could say um, something like um I'm enjoying myself here, but I still remember everyone in Little Weir World. Yeah. Um, can you read through what we've got so far? Yeah, sure. Um, dear Mr. Tom, I'm writing to tell you that I'm well and I got to my mum safely. I was sick on the train, but I feel a lot better. Okay, maybe we should like start going into a bit more detail. Yeah. yeah. So, how so he's feeling. Right, if you remember at the beginning of today's lesson, we discussed what was important about group work, what made a good group. All right, so let's see what we can remember. So, Amy, what have you learned? Uh, well, I think if we did disagree a lot, I think we would have had to vote, but I don't think we got that. So you were all very good to each other and you all agreed, did you? Yeah. Well done. All right, what do you reckon? We tried to be critical friends when we were, when people discussed their ideas. Well done, I think that's really important. Okay, well done. Um, it was important that one person did the scribing because if, say, three of us did it, it would be confusing and we wouldn't be working as a team. Yeah, definitely. Um, we listened to each other's opinions. Good, very, very important. Yeah. And we agreed with most people's um, opinions. Right, that's because we're lovely people. Mm -hmm. We tried not to speak over each other too much, but we did a bit. <laughs> I think we do, we're all human. Yeah, it's very important that we do. That links with the listen, doesn't it? I think it's important to read over as well. Yes. Um, and why, why do I insist that you do keep rereading things? Because she might have done things wrong. Yes. And other people well, might not agree wrong. about that and, not, yeah. and they might have not known that was in or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yes, you've got, you, you need to constantly reread it because, especially working as a team, because somebody, you might have misheard a word that Amy was saying. Yeah. And so yeah. rereading it, making sure you go over it again, means that Amy can say, oh no, that wasn't what I said. Okay. Hi. Well done. All right. That was lovely. Smashing piece of work. Thank you.